tuning in to my educational YouTube channel where we look at video game development and playing video games. My name is Professor Selzer and today we're going to be looking at physics.sphericast. That's right, where we cast an entire sphere out into the scene, not just a single ray, an entire sphere. And as you can see, the sphere is being cast out into the scene and now it is responding by colliding with objects. Current hit objects is updated to sphere because it ran into the sphere. But if we move that out of the way, you can see that our sphere cast has now hit the cube. So this is physics.sphericast. Stay tuned. And before we get started, I want to say a big thanks to my patrons over here on Patreon. Your guys' support helps a ton to keep this channel going, make more tutorials, better videos. Let's get started with the tutorial on a brand new Unity scene right now. Okay, so here we are with the completely blank brand new Unity scene. We're going to be using the uh, Unity scripting documentation for the physics.sphericast right here. And let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to make a plane so that there's some kind of a ground on the on the floor. And then on the main camera, let's create a new script. We're going to call it sphericaster. And this is the script that's going to actually do uh, the sphericast, of course. And let's, first of all, define some variables at the top. And what variables we're going to use. Well, if we look at this physics.sphericast parameters, that's a really good start. So let's just go through this list really quick. We're going to need an origin. So uh, the the starting place of the, of the raycast. So I'm going to do a private vector 3, and we'll call this origin. And then it's going to need a radius. And so a radius is probably a good one to be public, so we can change it. We're just going to call this one sphere radius, and that of is a float, so public float sphere radius, and then we're going to need a direction. So this is the direction that the ray is going to be shot in. That'll be a private vector three, and we'll call this one direction. And then it's going to need a hit info. So this is something that will uh, define in the update function it needs a max distance so this is another good one for public float so that we can change it and we'll call this one uh, max distance and then we're gonna need a layer mask so a nice way to do a layer mask is just to make it public and do a public layer mask and I'm just gonna call it layer mask with the lowercase l and then the query trigger interaction is whether or not it responds to whether it hits triggers. And uh, we can define that in the actual Raycast call. So we have the basic variables that we need. Let's go back to the uh, inspector here. We could define the layer mask, the sphere radius. I'll put the 0.5 and the max distance for now will start with 5. So the next part in the update function, let's actually do the sphere cast. So first of all, let's update the origin. So I'm going to say origin is equal to transform dot position. And because I've added this script to the camera itself, this is just going to get the cameras a position. And then the direction, we're going to set that to transform dot forward. And of course, you can shoot a ray wherever you want to from wherever you want in whatever direction but in this case we're going to use the camera's position and forward um, that's the way a first person shooter or vr works so i think that's a good example and next let's define a ray cast hit and we'll just call this one hit and that of course matches up to the uh, hit info here so we're going to do if and the reason why we're doing an if statement is because if we look at the documentation for physics.sphericast, it is a public static bool, so it's going to return a bool when we call the function true or false, whether it hit something. So if, and we'll say physics.raycast, and in this case, we should be doing physics.sphericast. So physics.sphericast, now there's 12 different... Uh, definitions of this function and for this example we're going to use the one that is uh, at the bottom of the list there 12 of 12 so if I say physics.sphericast I can look at all the different ways that I could call this function and of course 
12 of 12 is the one that we're going to be using. It wants a vector three origin, a radius, direction, hit info, max distance, layer mask, and a query trigger interaction. So for the physics.sphericast, we of course are starting at the origin and we are casting out with a radius of the sphere radius. And the direction is going in the direction. And it's going out to uh, our variable hit. The max distance is, of course, our variable that we made called max distance. The layer mask is our variable we made called layer mask. And here, query trigger interaction, we can say query trigger interaction dot collide ignore use global. I'm going to set it to use global because that is the default. And if you want more information about what that is, we could just go ahead and click, not there, but go ahead and click here. And we can see that this is the overrides the global physics dot query hit triggers. And so this specifies whether the ray cast query is going to hit triggers by default. So I want to know if we hit an object and I want to know what object we're hitting. So I'm going to define a public game object and I'm going to say current hit object. And that will be null unless the ray, the sphere cast has hit something. So I'm going to say current hit object is equal to hit dot transform dot game object. Now we have this raycast hit info hit and hit has um, a lot of information with it. One of them is transform, but there is no game object. So if you want to get access to the game object or the name of it, you have to say hit dot transform dot game object dot name. So we've set a, we've made a current hit object and now we've set this object to be whatever, whatever we've hit with the raycast. And the other thing that I'm, that I want to save is a private variable. And this one is going to be a float for current hit distance. So it saves how far away the object is that, that we're hitting. So I'm going to update that one as well. Current hit distance is equal to hit dot distance. And if I go back into the editor, let's go ahead and make a cube and a sphere in the scene. So we have some objects to collide with. There we go. And here's the main camera. Let's hit play. Now we can say current hit object is none. However, if I move the camera closer to the cube, we see that nothing happens. And the reason why is because the layer mask is currently set to none. Let's set that to everything. And we'll try that again. Hit play. We're going to move the camera closer to the cube. And when we got within five units, it went ahead and changed the current hit object to cube. If we move it away, it's not going to update, but that's okay. We will do an else and we'll say if we have an, if the raycast didn't hit anything, we're going to say current hit distance is equal to there is no hit dot distance. So instead of that, we're just going to go to the max distance. So the current hit distance is max distance and the current hit object is equal to null. So now it'll update. If it doesn't hit something, it'll update the current hit object so that it, it is null and that'll work good, but we can't see what's going on very well in the scene. So let's go ahead and make a function void on draw gizmos selected. So it's going to draw the get these gizmos for whatever object is selected. And um, first I'll just set the uh, gizmos dot color and we'll set that to something like color dot red. And we're just going to draw two things. First, we're going to do a debug draw, draw line and the start of the line is going to be the origin. And then we want to draw at the end of the raycast. So to get the endpoint, we're going to start with the origin and we're going to do plus 
the direction multiplied by the current hit distance. And again, current hit distance is five if it's hitting nothing, and otherwise it's whatever uh, distance the object that we hit. And we're also going to do a gizmos dot draw wire sphere. Draw wire sphere wants a center and a radius. So for the center, we're going to do the origin plus the direction multiplied by the current hit distance, just like the endpoint of our line. And for the radius, we're going to use the sphere radius. So if I go back into the scene now, and we hit play, there we go. We can see that we can see where the sphere is. Now, this on a draw gizmo selected gives us a nice visual representation in the scene of what is of what is happening uh, with our sphere cast. So we can see what's going on. And if I move the camera closer. We're going to see it's going to update the current hit object when it hits the uh, cube. And also the sphere will um, is only be drawn to the point where it's hitting uh, since we're updating the current hit distance. And if we go away from there and it doesn't hit anything, of course, this goes back to null. And it draws the default length of the uh, max distance. So this is how physics.sphereCast works. And one of the nice things here uh, over a raycast, for example, is with this sphere. And if I were to slide this over just a little bit, if we look at the main camera, normally a ray cast on the vector three dot forward from the camera would not hit this sphere. But because we're doing a sphere cast, we can see that it's definitely going to hit it. And there you can see we updated the uh, current object to sphere. So uh, we've hit something and where normally this white line, the vector three dot forward, that wouldn't have hit anything, it would have kept going straight and it would have ran into the cube. So just a small example of um, how the how the sphere cast can be very useful. And uh, one note here on the layer mask is um, if, if we wanted to change that, so here we got the sphere and we put the sphere onto the water layer. And we didn't want this uh, this sphere cast to collide with anything on that layer. Then we could uncheck water. And now when I move the main camera closer, it'll go right through the sphere. But it'll still collide with the cube. All right. Well, if this tutorial helps you out, please give it a like, subscribe, leave a comment below what you think. And stay tuned for the next videos in the series because next up we have the SphereCast All, which is going to uh, return everything that was hit within the sphere, and then also SphereCast Non Allocated. So there's a couple more functions associated with SphereCast. Those are coming up in the next videos. Thanks for watching. See you guys then.